to model the face, because I had all these uh, tracking markers, uh, I had so many, I thought, well, I may as well use this as the mesh, as a guideline for the mesh of the uh, actual model, and I can, each vertex I can line up in the side view and the front view, and uh, if I uh, create a mesh that connects all of these tracking markers, I'll have a pretty complete uh, piece of geometry. So this isn't going to uh, create very good topology because I'm creating the vertices where the, the tracking markers are and they can be pretty much anywhere because uh, I didn't have too much control over that but it did create a pretty decent um, mesh that I was able to use it was pretty accurate um, it was matched my face pretty well so uh, I'm, I might just play this through in fast forward because it, it took me about 20 minutes to create the model and obviously you don't want to watch me uh, who is someone who's very good at 3D modeling, slowly create a face. So uh, enjoy it and fast forward. Alrighty, I finished modeling and all that was just a process of uh, lining up the vertice to this tracking marker on the side view and then also lining it up to the corresponding tracking marker on the front view. And then what I did is I, once I had a complete uh, side, I just uh, mirrored the geometry so it uh, was perfectly symmetrical on the other side. Although people's faces aren't completely symmetrical, unless you're a supermodel, um, then it's not going to be 100% accurate, but that's okay for for me. I don't mind. Uh, this geometry will be more than enough to accurate enough to track to to my face. It uh, it it, it uh, fits well with my with my face. So if I hit, um, I'm in smoothing mode. So if I press one, you'll see that uh, these still line up, but I've got like this witch's nose here, and it's only the uh, the vertices on the rim here, and um, I'm, I uh, positioned all the vertices for like this area here in the normal mode and um, for these vertices here because they don't have much supporting geometry I actually modeled them in smooth mode by pressing 3 and position them to where they should be um, and it, if you press 1 you'll see that it looks terribly inaccurate but it's this isn't how it's going to look we're going to uh, smooth use the smooth mode here so that the pixels so the the, uh, the model looks correct. And if I go to the perspective view, um, just scroll this down here, you can see the completed model. And if I press 1, you'll see the terrible abomination that I created. And uh, that's what it looks like in smooth mode. Um, we're going to be tracking this in PF track, which, uh, as far as I'm aware, doesn't support the, um, well, there's no way of getting this smooth smooth the model into PF track it would uh, if we export it, it would look like this it wouldn't take the smooth mode so what we do is in using the uh, the terrible looking version 
we can smooth this uh, in a different way by uh, this tool here, the Add Polygons tool, which will just add polygons to make it look smoother. And you can keep pressing it and keep adding polygons exponentially. So that's a very smooth mesh, but we uh, we don't want it that smooth. We can only we could probably get away with only smoothing it once. So if we take off the wireframe, we can see it looks quite jagged, but it uh, this will do for us because if you have too many polygons, it just gets really messy in PF Track. So um, to export this, uh, we'll have to make sure that our OBJ exporter is loaded. So uh, if you don't uh, know if that's loaded, you can go Window Settings Preferences Plugin Manager and make sure that uh, OBJ export is loaded and mine already is so I'll select the model file export selection I'll just go to the options here and I'll select an OBJ export and I don't need any of these and I'll export this selection and I'll save it to the desktop because I'm bad and I will call it face mesh you have a terribly messy desktop. Okay, and I'll see you in PF track. I've already uh, created my project, so we'll go new shot and let's import our footage, load the image sequence, and let's go file, import track and geometry. I've got my face mesh OBJ here. Okay, so let's rotate it into a position. Let's try and line it up um, with the face. And we want to try and get all the translate, rotate, and scale as correct as we can. Uh, so yeah, we want to try and line up as accurately as possible to help the, uh, the track. And it might be quite difficult to do so, considering the, the OBJ, the model that we created, isn't 100% uh, accurate, but we'll do our best anyway. Okay, that looks uh, pretty decent. Now let's just go to paint weights. And because you can see that we didn't actually model the hat, because it's different to our model, we should probably discard that from tracking. So let's just go to negative and paint that out. And I think that uh, it doesn't actually go to the other side. Uh, if I go to weights, I'll just go forward to here, I'll go rotate, and I'll rotate the, the mask, and I'll just uh, minus the weights over here as well, and then I'll delete this keyframe. Okay, so let us track forward, and I like to track it forward one frame at a time. It's tedious, I know, but it's good to see where things go wrong, um, and we will probably expect to see a problem very soon. So let's track it forwards. And we can see that it's, uh, let's just go to transparent here. If we hit Alt 2, we can see that the uh, geometry isn't lined up very well. So I'm just going to persist and track forward to somewhere around frame 20. Alright, so yeah, we can see the problem. It's got too much rotation here. It needs a bit more in the X. And the translation scale also look wrong. And when we modify these, it's as you can see, it's created another keyframe here, which is good for us because we can then uh, let PF track interpolate between the two and get a more accurate track. So um, the main thing I'm concerned about is the nose. The nose is a good uh, feature for us to try and align this geometry with. So everything looks fine except for this bit here where we've got all this extra uh, we can see that it's ghosting the uh, geometry it looks like it's it's uh, on top of nothing and that might be a fact the fact that the um, geometry is a little bit inaccurate um, we may not be able to align that 100% but we'll try move that back in more z space okay 
All right, let's uh, go back to frame one. I'm gonna move that down a little bit. Okay, I'll go back to frame 20 and track backwards and see what happens. And that's looking okay. Now let's track forward from frame 20. Keeping the, uh, the nose, constantly checking where the nose is. As you can see, it's drifting a bit with the nose. Um, it's too high up. You can see that here. This is where the point of the nose is, and it's probably where it should be. It's slightly off. So I might go back to here and instead of moving it down, I might rotate this up a little bit. Actually, I will move it down as well. To the nose. It's actually Oh yeah, it needs to be down a little bit more. And yep, we're getting this problem here. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll be able to get rid of that. Mm. No, I don't think so. Okay, let's just track back to a line to get some data between both keyframes. And once we've done that, we can track it forwards again. Okay, back to frame 20 and let us track forward.